Hey you guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOatman.com. Welcome to Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness, a daily podcast devoted to spirituality and self-help. If you're new, I want to welcome you. If you're returning, welcome back. So today we have a very special guest with us. We have Mr. Lewis Morris, who is a relationship coach, and he has been giving advice to his family and friends since he was a teenager but he's dreamed always of helping people. So aside from coaching, he has a podcast called, um, and books and an online blog and pretty much does everything. So I cannot wait to talk to him. So please help me welcome Lewis. Hey, how you doing Melissa? It's good to be on. Thanks for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about myself. As you mentioned, I uh, people in my neighborhood started, you know, asking me these questions when I was 13, you know, mainly about relationships. It was mainly girls asking me how to deal with their boyfriends, you know, but there were some guys, you know, sandwiched in there, you know, and I didn't understand it. I was just 13, but I like listening to people and I would give them advice and things like that. And, you know, and then, you know, we fast forward here and I had four sisters. Well, I have six, but I was raised with four of them and my mother and I was the only boy. So I've always been around women and always listened to conversations and talk with women. So I'm comfortable uh, with them and I'm a man. So I help them deal with both sides of it. You know what I'm saying? The womanly side and the manly side. So this is a uh, part of that. And then the spiritual part that I, uh, that I coach, it's just helping people connect better or establish a connection with the creator so that, um, because I believe we have one. So uh, I think that it's important for us to have a connection with him so that it can make our lives better. So these are the two areas that I cover as far as coaching is concerned. As you mentioned, I have a podcast, The Heart Matters, and you know we just deal with self-improvement issues generally we talk about relationships but that's not all we talk about just self-improvement just like you do and uh this is a this is it in a nutshell i do a little writing not as much as i used to because i'm busy with other things but uh that's pretty much it yeah this is what i do and i love it it's great that's awesome that you help give relationship advice to women because i think the fact that you grew up with four siblings and they happen to all be sisters probably did give you a lot of insight into that. So what kinds of things do you help people with when they come to you for relationship work? Okay, so what happened was is that I had to expand it a little bit because my coach said that it was a little bit too narrow to just work with women. So now I work with couples as well. I work with women and couples. And mainly it's with women and couples who are having trouble in their relationship. Not dating advice, not that I can't do dating advice, but that's not really my thing. But it's women and couples who are having problems, you know, where they're not communicating as well as they used to. They're not as affectionate as they used to be. Um, there are some issues as far as sexuality you know, and things like that. So these are the things that, that I give women and couples advice on. Um, and the program, for lack of a better term, I wouldn't call it that, but it involves journaling, you know what I'm saying? Because writing, it, it helps you get things out and, you know, and separate it from your body so that you can analyze it better, you know? So uh, that's included. And of course you have the action steps that you have to take in order to fix whatever's going on in the relationship. If there's lack of communication, then I uh, talk to the women and the couples about how you can sit down and have a table talk, right? And what you start with, what, what do you begin with? How does this, you know, in the flow of the conversation and to keep everything even keel and things like that. This is what I advise as far as uh, you know, women and couples, you know, and it depends on what the problems are because relationships are, they're not stagnant, they're different. You know what I mean? They're not like a um, 
spiritual thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, more because you have two people involved, right? And different emotions and different characteristics. So you have to listen very carefully to both people in order to gauge what's really going on in the relationship. And then you, you know, just make suggestions and why don't you try this and do that? You know, because we're not psychiatrists or psychologists. So we have to be careful about telling people what to do. We, just, we have to let them find their own way and then just, you know, just encourage them to take that path that they've already discovered for themselves. Does that answer the question a little? Yes, it does. And I love that you have them journal because I talk about this all of the time in many podcast episodes that I think a big problem that many of us have is when we're in the situation, our emotions take over and then we can't really see the situation for what's actually happening. It's like our, we see it from our side and we can't see it from the other person's side and we make everything bigger than it actually is because our emotions got involved. And when we can sit down and look at something like a third party observer, like if this was happening to someone else and it wasn't directly happening to me, what would I think then? Mm -hmm. So I love that you have them journal for that reason. And would you say that communication and not really being able to communicate properly is one of the biggest issues people have? Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably the biggest issue besides money. Because a lot of times in relationships, money becomes a really big issue if there's a lack of money or, or, or people, the two people don't feel one is threatened by the other as far as financially, like, you know, one makes more than the other and the other feels threatened and that their role is being minimized, you know. But other than that, if money isn't involved, most of the time it's lack of communication. The two people aren't talking or the way that they're talking is not effective. You know what I mean? So yeah. my job is to, to show them how to be more effective in their communication or just how to sit down and communicate. Cause sometimes a couple gets into a situation where they notice things are not right in the relationship, but both of them feel too ashamed to talk about it with each other. So nothing gets resolved because the both of them are holding back. You know what I mean? So we, we have to get both of them at the table, for lack of a better term, so that they can get out the issues that they've already noticed, but just felt reluctant to talk about. You know, so communication is uh one of my friends used to say this all the time, and he used to say it so much that it used to get on my nerves, but it was true. He would say that lack of communication brings about confusion. And it's true because if, if the two people aren't talking, how, do, how can you really know what's going on with the other person? You know, and if you don't know, then there's no way to resolve it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it does bring a level of confusion, doesn't it? It does, you're right. Because I think, and I've been guilty of this in relationships in the past of thinking that someone could read my mind or that we thought alike when really, um, we were on two totally different pages, <laughs> but we did, but I didn't know that wow. because we didn't, you know, I think this is the interesting thing. I think communication is one thing that really needs to be taught. And because a lot of people come from homes where there wasn't communication, where parents didn't communicate with each other or with their children in the way they should have. And so I think that really a lot of it comes down to people really don't know how to communicate effectively. Mm, wow. Okay. It's funny that you meant that because a lot of the uh, communication between my mother and father, you know, it was a, it was a lot of yelling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, my home too. It was, it was of, the same it way. Was, yeah. It was a lot of yelling because, uh, because my father was not, he was not really good at it. You know, my mother was a lot better, you know, and because of that, I think there was some, some tension involved a lot of times when they would talk about issues that were uncomfortable because he was, he wasn't able to articulate himself as well as she was. Yeah. So be, because of that, he would start yelling, you know, so, uh, you know, so 
I, I seen the other side of it, you know, but most of the sensitive issues that I wanted to talk about, I always talked about with my mother because she was a better communicator, you know, than my father was. So that was a, that was a plus for me as well. And I could always go and talk to her about sensitive issues, you know? That's good. And I, you know, I know from my own experience, I became somebody who avoided conflict because I didn't want to hear the yelling and I didn't, like, I just wanted peace. But I wasn't really making peace. I was just ignoring <laughs> what was happening that I wasn't, that I didn't like, just because I didn't want to have a conflict or have, you know, to confront anyone. And what I've learned since and what I teach too in one of my programs is conflict is good, actually, if you do it in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, so I, I think I wrote a piece about this recently about uh, things not having to turn into an argument when you talk to your significant other. But sometimes, like you mentioned, you know, both people or one person thinks that if they bring up something sensitive or something that the other person doesn't like, it necessarily has to lead to an argument. And that's not the case. It doesn't have to. You know, it all depends on timing and um, the way something is said, you know. So it was interesting that you mentioned that communication should be taught because sometimes it's not, it's, it's not what you say, it's how you say it that can bring about a negative response or a positive response. So this is, this is also one of the things that I talk to clients about. Look, there's a certain way that you should bring up an issue that you don't like that's going on in the relationship. You know, matter of fact, I did a podcast about it called uh, The Seven Things Not to Say or Do When You're uh, Arguing with Your Partner. You know, because there's certain things <laughs> that if you say it or do it, it's only going to make it worse. It's not going to help the conversation at all. You know, and I, I, I just pin, well, it's probably at least 10, but I only pick seven, right? You know, uh, that, that the other person shouldn't say, you know, and one of the things that I mentioned is name calling, you know, don't, don't do that. If you're trying to resolve the issue, don't, you know, don't go in and start calling your partner stupid and, you know, and you know, you don't know what you're doing and don't do that because that's not going to help. It's just going to make things worse. So yeah, I agree with you that communication should definitely be something that should be taught because everybody can't do it effectively. And I think another big problem is people don't bring up the things that are bothering them until it gets to the breaking point. And that's when they lose it emotionally. And so they're way up here. So then they do start the name calling and there isn't even, you can't come to an agreement with somebody if you can't think rationally or logically and when you get in that space where you you're already like overly emotional, it makes it worse because you can't, you really can't come up with a compromise if you can't even, it's like you can't hear the other person. All you hear is the negative and it's just not a good place to be. Right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, um, I did a, um, I mentioned to you about the seven things. Another thing that I mentioned on there is to not, not, um, not be silent. Because sometimes uh, somebody will say something in a relationship when they're having a discussion and the other person won't respond. They'll just stop talking. And I said in the podcast, I said, don't, don't ever do that. You know, because, because again, if you stop talking, then the other person can draw their own conclusions, you know, as to what you're feeling and what you're thinking. And you don't want that when you're trying to have a discussion to resolve issues. You want things to be clear, you know what I'm saying, as to what you need and what you expect going forward. You know, so silence is not a good thing in that situation, in that uh, particular situation. I'm really so glad you brought that up because I had that happen to me in a, the past relationship that I had just had, where if we didn't agree on something or he would get upset, he would just stopped texting for like hours. And then, as you said, then you're drawing your own conclusion, like, well, is, are we done? Is this it? Like, what's going on here? And that used to drive me insane. 
Um, and I, I don't think it's very helpful at all. So I like that you brought that up because I get, I don't know, to me, that's like running away from a problem anyway, which is never going to help you. Okay, so what would you do when he would like stop texting? For, uh, what would you do? I would text and say, um, are, can we talk about this? And you're like, like, I don't want to talk. And just like stop texting. And then it wouldn't be until, you know, he'd had his time to cool off or whatever that he would. So I'd leave him alone until then, hmm. you know, yeah. but it was, I would do drive myself insane because I'm sitting there thinking about all of the possibilities that, you know, could happen. And I realize now too, that I can't do that to myself, but um, it's just not a good tactic. Hmm. I don't know. No. No, it's not a good tactic. Not not in that situation. Sometimes silence is good, but not then. Because you're trying to resolve an issue and or issues that's in the relationship. And you can't do that if you're being quiet. You know what I'm saying? You have to let the other person know what you're feeling, uh, what you expect, uh, what it is you want. You know what I'm saying? That's another issue that arises. Sometimes people in relationships think that it's not good to tell the other person what they want. Uh, what's wrong with that? You know what I'm saying? Now, again, it's about method. Now, if you start yelling, you know what I'm saying, trying to tell the person what you want, then that, that could become a problem. But if you just say, uh, listen, you know, I don't like the fact that we don't talk the way we used to. You know, we used to sit on the couch and cuddle and, and watch movies together. We don't do that anymore. You know, I would like to get back to that. You know what I'm saying? What's, I mean, what's the problem with, what's wrong with that? You know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no hostility. There's no yelling. There's no profanity. No, the uh, one person is just stating what they miss and what they would like to have in the relationship to make it better, to make it more fruitful. So that's, something that's good you know saying that if the other person becomes negative you know what I'm saying that's not your fault because you didn't you didn't say it in a negative way you would just articulate what you what you felt and what you needed so you know i just i don't i don't get that and but that's something that um can also be resolved when um you can get two people to talk uh, and teach them how to talk effectively, then the other person, you can, you can kind of um, get them not to take things so personally, you know, just because they're being, uh, some, they're, something's being said that they don't particularly, they're not comfortable with, you know? Yeah, I think it's really interesting because um, I've actually had to learn even how to communicate with my children you know, I have a teenage son and he and I used to butt heads all the time. And we actually had to learn and we did from going to counseling how he needs to be communicated with, you know, in the same way, yelling or getting loud. Or, you know, if I would say something to him with a certain tone, he would take it as me yelling. And it wasn't me yelling, but that's how he heard it. So I had to learn how to talk to him in a way that would get through to him. Because if, if he at all took it as an attack of any kind, he just shut down. Mm. And then it was ineffective. So I think that not only is it important that we learn how to communicate with our partners, but also children, too. I think that's another thing we overlook. Right. Okay. So, uh, so now, yep, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm, I'm waiting on you. I was just going to ask you about your book because I read that you had written a book. Okay. Well, actually I, I wrote five. I, I wrote, know. I wrote five books and two of them that two of them we're giving away. One is good. The two that we're giving away is relationship and rhymes. And this book is a book of poems. All of them rhyme all the way through. And they're talking about different relationships friendship, love, marriage, like that. But all of them rhyme all the way through, right? It's, it's great. I, I wrote it, what, 2016? 2016, I wrote this book. 
And the other one is called The Heart Matters. I named it after the podcast. And all it is is a spiritual uh, book with spiritual lessons and spiritual anecdotes in it, uh, stories, you know, about the prophets and messengers and things like that, and um, extracting benefit from some of the stories of the prophets and messengers that we can use today, you know, and these are the two books that we're giving away, you know, and then I have the other three books, which is Ramble. Ramble is, a, is just that. I'm just talking about various subjects, politics, uh, finance. Uh, there's some poetry in it, a couple of short stories, right? And, and then there's the G Experiment, which, my, which is my only fiction book. That's the only fiction book that I've ever written. Uh, it's about a guy who grew up in Brooklyn and he got into some trouble when he was younger. And when he got out, he changed his life and he went on this experiment with this young girl named, uh, dog, I forgot her name. I think it's Sonia, no, Sarah, right? They did this experiment. And that's why it's called the G Experiment because his name is Greg Anderson. And then the other book is called um, um, the the principles of cultivating manhood all three of those are available on amazon by the way right you can get those on amazon the two free ebooks you can just download them by going to lewismarscoaching.com slash ebooks and you can download those two for free and uh yeah they're a little fun you know good for the heart you know kind of books yeah i, I enjoy writing them because i still i still love writing but like I said, I just don't have as much time to do it as I used to because of the other, uh, because of the other things that I'm doing. But um, one, of the, one of the beautiful things about the coaching is that you get to experience other people's writing because of the journaling, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, like you, you do your coaching call and you probably experience this too. Do you have your client's journal as well? Okay. so because of the, the coaching call, they read to you what they wrote in the journal or they send it to you beforehand, before the actual call. And you get to look at it and take your notes and, you know, and tell them what you saw in the writing once you get on the call. So it's kind of a substitute for writing, you know what I'm saying? Because I get to read other people's writing. So it kind of fills the void a little bit for me, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, I don't do I don't get to do it as much as I used, but I love writing. It's great. Yeah, I love how oftentimes things that maybe were not so apparent to us when we start journaling and writing become apparent. You know, when when people come to me with situations and they're like, I don't know what to do, and then they start writing about it, like write down. And I always tell them, Well, write the situation as if it wasn't happening to you. And then read it and see if something else jumps out at you. And then usually they're able to say, oh, well, I see what it's really all about now. Mm. Because I took myself out of the equation. Right. Okay, so I, I heard some time ago, I had this woman on recently. Her name is Taryn Ambrose. She's an author. She wrote a book, a poetry book called Hold On. It's coming out on the 26th. And she and I asked her to explain on the podcast the effectiveness of journaling, right? And because I've, I've tried to do it in the past, but I'm just not good at articulating it. And she just summed it up in a very brief paragraph. She says that when you write it down, right, you put it on the paper, right, you separate yourself from the thoughts and emotions. You, you, you just take them out of your body and you put them on this piece of paper and then you come back to them later and you can, ins you can inspect it. You can look at it, and, but it's separate from you now. And when she said it, I was like, I mean, it was brilliant. It, was, it wasn't even a whole paragraph, but she explained it so well, you know, that uh, it's on the podcast. I think it's coming out. Uh, I don't know when it's coming out, in October somewhere, sometime. But anyway, I heard... Uh, Maya Angelou give a similar explanation, you know, when she was getting ready to write the poem for uh, Bill Clinton for the inauguration, right? And she said this, this woman came up to her in the supermarket before she had written the poem. And she asked her, and how's the poem going? Because it, it was public knowledge because they put it out on the news that Maya Angelou was going to be doing the poem at the inauguration. 
So when she was in the supermarket shopping and this lady came up to her and said, well, how's the poem going, right? And she said, I don't know, you know, I haven't, I haven't started it yet. So then Maya Angelou said that after that incident, she stopped uh, she, she, she would go to a hotel and write be, before she let anything out. She would just go to a hotel and seclude herself before she would let anything out. She said, because poetry is personal. So she didn't want to, she didn't want to give the woman anything, you know, in the supermarket, you know, saying that was personal to her, you know, saying until after she had written the poem and everything and everything was out. And then once she shared it, then she could talk about it, but she didn't want to talk about it before. You know what I mean? So I thought it was interesting when, uh, when she said that, you know, saying that poetry is personal. And that's a poem that I have in one of my books too. <laughs> Your poetry is personal. It is. It really is. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think it's really awesome the way that writing and even, you know, some people write songs. So they write through music or whatever. Because to me, I used to teach poetry sometimes. And I would always use music and song lyrics to help teach kids, you know, look, this is basically poetry, but set to music. Um, and it's interesting how effective that is in helping people to express their feelings and, and what they're really going through. Okay, well, when did you do that? Uh, well, I teach, so I'm a German teacher by day. <laughs> um, and a few years ago, I taught English. Um, as like an, they had more classes than they had teachers and I had extra hours. So they asked me to teach English. So I taught junior level English and one of the units was poetry. And so we learned about all different kinds of poetry, but I used to love to teach them about um, the different elements of poetry through music. Because I thought it was a way that they would relate and then they would take their own music. They would have to find a song that they liked their favorite song and they would have to find the different elements of poetry within that song that they chose. Okay, okay, wait. <laughs> okay, so oh all right, well, what was this like? Now I don't mean to I don't mean to take the mic from you, but this is interesting. Okay, so what was this like? I mean, what kind of songs were they coming to you with? Well, for example, one of the kids chose Firework by Katy Perry. Okay. And so the, they chose that because you're a firework was, you know, it's like, it's a, a metaphor. And so then they would just go through and they would have to pick out if there was a simile in there. Um, if there were any kinds of examples of other uh, poetic, you know, uh, what am I trying to say, tools in the, uh, the song. So it was really interesting and cool to see what they would pick. And for me, it was new music because I didn't necessarily always know the songs that they would pick, but they were really good at being able to go through and, you know, say like, well, this is personification because it's talking about the walls crying. And it was cool to see them be able to make meaning out of what we've been talking about the whole time. Okay. All right. All right. I liked it. Yeah. They loved it. They loved the project. So, And then we would listen to some of the song when they would present their project. So. Anything else you want to ask me? Uh, yeah. So if anyone wants to work with you or would like to follow you, how might they do that? Okay, if you want to, I have the two coaching packages. I have the spiritual growth package and I have the revitalized relationship package, which is for women and couples. If you want to look at any of those two, you can go to the website. It's lewismorriscoaching.com. That's L-O-U-I-S-M-O-R-R-I-S.com. Right. Also up there is my blog and the, and the podcast as well. You can go and listen and read the blogs as well. On the on the pod. and you can download the two free ebooks when you go to the website as well. 
Um, also, if you want to follow me just for a uh, little wisdom and inspiration, you know, during, you know, on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest. Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at Lewis Mars Coaching. At Lewis Mars Coaching on all three. Yeah, Instagram, Facebook. I will Facebook, put all of their yes. links. I'll put all of your social media links in your website link in the notes to this podcast so if anyone wants to find you they can go directly there and click on it it will take them directly to your website i appreciate it thank you very <laughs> much yes thank you so much for being here do you have any last words of wisdom for our audience members today? um yes yes for the for the people who are struggling the couples who are struggling during covid because it seems like it's going to be around for a while longer it seems that way. You have to learn how to get some distance while you're at home. Even if one of you just have to go out and take a drive, get in the car, go take a drive, you know what I'm saying? Separate yourself from the house for a couple of hours and then come back. Distance, yeah. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. You heard this before, haven't you? Yes. Uh -huh. it's, it's, a, it's, it's a real thing. You know, so if couples have to be in the house all the time together, you know, sometimes that's going to take, it's going to create some tension because you're always seeing the other person. So just get a little distance, you know, some maybe go in the backyard, you know, one of you go in the backyard for a couple of hours during the day or, you know, go to separate rooms during the day, but just get a little diff distance on a daily basis, you know, so that you don't get a, uh, tired of each other that that i mean i think it's really important because it really does think i really do think that COVID is going to be around for a little while longer and couples you know the divorce rate has went up you know it's like up to 34 percent now you know so couples just need to get a little space on a daily basis so that you can uh you know give each give each other time to breathe without one another all right that's that's pretty much it I think that is great advice. Everyone needs a little me time anyway. So that's great advice to give to people. I want to thank you so much for being here with us. You're welcome. Thanks, Melissa, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome. And you'll have to come back and talk to us again sometime soon. I would love to. Thank you. All right. And I want to thank all of you for being here with us today also. As always, if you like this podcast, please subscribe please leave me a review from wherever you're listening. You can leave me some stars on iTunes. That helps others to find me and you're helping me in my mission. So thank you to those of you who've already done that. You can follow me on social media. Don't forget, I go live Mondays at 6.30 Central on Facebook where I do a free card reading. And if you show up for the live, I will pull a personal card for you. Also, if you wanna work with me, you can go to my website, melissaoatman.com. There you will find all of the services I offer and you can purchase your sessions directly from my website. And then when you're ready to schedule, simply contact me and we will book your schedule, your session. Thank you so much. I am sending you so much love and light from wherever you're listening. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will talk to you again soon. Bye guys.